And here we go. It's all your fault. It is all your fault. See, I don't know you, but I hate you. All right. I've never seen you before, but I know that I can take you. It's because of you that she doesn't trust me. Yeah. Even though she says that she loves me, and it's all because of you, I heard about you before I even met you. Well, My mother played I'd be nothing like you. Me and my brother stayed up half the night plotting against you, mapping out battle strategies of what we would do. Should one of our sisters ever come in contact with you, I heard about your schoolyard teasing and bullying till my ears bled. She talked kind words of you, but all I heard were screams instead over dinner. She told me about how you would fight. In the car, she told me about how you might be the greatest open hand fighter in the world. But not mine. Your 46 years and zero losses might cause this good young girl to cry, but not I see. I don't know you, but I hate you. I've never seen you before, but I know that I can take you. It's because of you? That I can't sneak a kiss. No. I can't have that. Because when I wrap my arms around her, she jumps as if her back is being stabbed at. And then there's silence. And she giggles. And I can't stand that. When she looks at me with those brown eyes and says, sorry, force of habit. And it's all your fault. It's all your fault. But I don't fear you. I can't hear you. Your silence is deaf. But I don't fear you The venom I was calling me to move to Become the capitalista that I know can bruise you Eu sou Angulero In case you don't know We selfish with our prey Because we play so low And there won't be no Strike by stick and move When I come through There won't be no calling six or seven dudes On my crew to come jump you Cause see I want you like I want her, all to myself, <laughs> with no sharing. And I can bring the horror to you, surrounded by death. So bring your beer joking buddies, and your weed token homies, and follow me down to Rio de Janeiro. Let the tombstones there tell you the story about how friendships are cut short with razor blades. How allies are not exempt from being betrayed. Imagine what we do to our enemies. Well. I don't know you, but I hate you. I've never seen you before, but I know that I can take you. And if I gotta fight through six feet of earth to get to you and call a grave my home, let it be known it's not crack that I'm on, but a mission. Right. And I won't Come stop on. until it's completed. I can't stop until it's completed. Don't get conceited, cause I can hear you laughing at me. In between punches on your tombstone, I can hear you laughing at me. When she said she just wanted to be friends, I can hear you laughing at me. Cause the anger she could see in you, she could now see in me. And now I from the, you're getting married, for what, <laughs> collection. <laughs> what was that again? Yeah. What was that? Thank you. All right. Haiku. <laughs> from the, you're getting married, for what, <laughs> collection. <laughs> if marriage, is your only goal, then your wedding is your funeral.
And now a poem. Poets that spit from memory are better than poets that spit off paper. How am I supposed to take heed to your words that put a wrinkle in your brow when you won't allow it to put a wrinkle in your brain? See, to entertain me. You must use arm movements and hand gestures. <laughs> your performance will lack luster if I can read your grocery list on the opposite end of the paper. Written in pencil. Because poets that write with pen I'm better than poets that write with pencil. <laughs> Woe to those that hold on to an eraser like a little kid in the pool holding on to the edge as they inch their way down to the deep end. <laughs> Scared to swim through deep blue thoughts are like those who can make characters with ink. <laughs> blue ink. Because everybody knows those black ink poems sink of how good that sextant was last night poem. And thugs can be sensitive to poems. And don't call me a bitch, you bastard. Home. See, blue is symbolic of the heavens from which you gain your inspiration. Now pay attention. These are all the characteristics of a real poet. And this is a real poem that will be repeated over and over and over again. These are the characteristics of a real poet. And this is a real poem that will be repeated over and over and over again. See, it's a new piece, but the same topic. And it will be repeated over and over and over again. You don't believe me? Take a trip down to the National Slam with me and count the number of fuck George Bush poems you hear still. I swear you will run out of digits. But who are you to judge me? That poem deserved higher than the 8.3. I have all the characteristics of a real poet. And this is a real poem because I spit from the heart. I save lives with my poems. So how much are you paying me for my feature? You know I can't be wasting my time is money and I can be deep and not just in debt. I'm talking deep like I'm so real that I'm fake. <laughs> nice. And then it'll take you a week to figure out what point I'm trying to make or Boy. I can be sensual Boy. and get the crowd to holler. And I can make you all hot and bother talking about what I did last night because see I don't cook, so last night, I ate out, <laughs> and it was finger looking good, and then I start yelling, yes, did you better start cheering, because yes. what I'm saying must be really fucking important, please, I have all the characteristics of a real poet, and this is a But somewhere, Maya Angelou is reciting a poem she wrote on paper in black ink with no arm movements, no hand gestures, barely speaking over a whisper. And the listener is crying. Address the Detroit Tigers cap. Yes. I was called a traitor last night at Titillating Tongues. If you don't, if you haven't been to Titillating Tongues, it's once a month. Please go. It's awesome. Where is it? Right. Soho Playhouse. Uh, yeah, the Soho Playhouse. Thank you. Oh, you know about Yeah, because you spent that one. Yeah, I remember what you spent. Yeah. 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 I remember you. <laughs> So, the reason, the reason I, I uh, wear the Detroit Lions cap is for three reasons. One is because, oh, Tigers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Sorry. Detroit Tigers. There we go. It's because, one, the Milwaukee Brewers traded Prince Fielder to the Detroit Tigers, Tigers and kept Ryan Braun, who then got tested positive for steroids, and they were like, oh, we have to launch this Support Ryan Braun campaign. The money they used for that campaign, they could have gave the freaking Prince Fielder and kept him in Milwaukee. So, then the whole Detroit music scene, in my opinion, is the capital of the Midwest. And everybody says it's Chicago. It hasn't been Chicago for years. 
So, and one of those main reasons is because of Jay Dilla. And so, right now, haiku. <laughs> From the Dilla R.I.P. collection. Turn it up a little louder so I know where it is that I am missed. Now, I understand since from the applause, a lot of y'all don't probably know who Jay Dilla is, thus. Uh, hey, 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 well then why ain't you clapping, goddammit? That was a good haiku! Come on, fuck it. Hey, okay. Just in case some of y'all clapping to cover up the fact that you don't know who Jay Dilla is, you saw me get emotional. Come on, say it. A poem. I'm trying not to write anything stupid. Like he was a man before his time, or he'll live on through his music and those who knew him, but I'm having a hard time writing anything else. The days after Jay Dilla died seem incomplete. Missing something that made life worth living. The echoes from the beat, apartment next door, seem juvenilely prepackaged compared to the sounds down the hallway. A scratch fat domino record skips over a domestic dispute stuck in the 10 second loop kept in rhythm by the ever present door slamming vet. I guess that's how those who live the high life choose to get down, but Dilla was just starting at the point where most people had reached their peak with more than just the sounds. Using this technique to teach evolution over the demo button chopped over screw beats, Dilla gave you whispers of genius. Forcing you to turn it up a little louder Making proud hip hoppers prouder than parents watching people ponder over how come their kids ain't got like skills. Just listen. Yes. The chitter chatter over the sense of admiration brings nicely with the ever present bass kick, and that's just the first 30 seconds of the rest of your life in this post neo soul movement brought to you in part by the Soul Quarians. History going in cycles and the ever burning imagination. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Dilla, for taking these life lessons and putting them across a musical scale representing the highs and the lows of each moment. This is charting uncharted territory. This is a call for discovery. Turn it up a little louder. For every one of my journeys, Dilla laid the track, conducting beats like a true Chattanooga champ from Detroit and like a true artist. He wasn't missed until he was gone. Come on. And then suddenly, Dilla tributes became as common as Gap commercials. <laughs> Radio station DJs shackled to their turntable, only allowed to play that one song he did for Janet that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis got credit for. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Jesus. And I'm trying not to write anything stupid. Like, oh, the irony, because he was constantly worshipped at hip-hop's mecca to the east. And I'm not talking just NYC. I'm talking about JP. I'm talking about the UK. And I'm trying not to write anything stupid like, He's making beats for Jesus now. You know, for the Rapture LP. But it's the only thing I can do to keep from turning my pen into a weapon and going after these stupid ass program directors, bitching about how hip hop is in this dark ages, conducting eulogies over Dilla tracks. They just now hearing that light works. That's more than just a guide. It inspires direction. The ever-burning imagination. He'll live on through his music and those who know him. So, like most poets, or no, I shouldn't even say that. The reason why I started writing poetry is to get over a broken heart. Aww. Yeah, high school is fucking brutal. So, <laughs> even in my adult life, I found that writing poetry gets over a broken heart. So this is a poem I wrote to a married woman. And uh, it goes like this. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. <laughs> I'm gonna take it as baby. <laughs> Comedians gotta sit in the back from now on. <laughs> Yesterday, I saw an old friend crying. 
So I walked up and asked what's wrong. She told me that the voice in her head was saying the same thing all day long. A man will not sacrifice his honor for the woman he loves. What good could come of it? Acting out in desperation at a point when all seems lost for what? To have his decision picked over and over again at a later time. His motives questioned. Selfish? I mean, he already lied once. Oftentimes, pride is mistaken for valor and sexual attraction for love. The miscommunication is, or so I'm told, what makes marriage a reasonable solution. Rewarding who's persistent rather than what's real here. But who am I to call her a liar when she says I love him? I mean, it wasn't like I was there. When she was surrounded by family and friends and asked by God if she would accept old boy with all his imperfections and impurities, and she said, I do. I say, she's retarded. <laughs> she says, she's happy. And wants me to be happy too. And when I say one day, no, what I really mean is, no thank you. See, I am happy. Walking this lonesome road all by myself with no one to answer to but my will. Picking up and leaving whenever I see fit. I'm going to Japan soon. And I don't want to have to worry about time zones. Calculating the perfect moment just so I can call and hear her voice and talk to her. About dumb shit. Like the chances of you getting struck by lightning are equivalent to the chances of you getting lockjaw. So if we were ever walking side by side and she got struck by lightning, I would probably get locked, y'all. Like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She thinks that I'm retarded. I think that I'm happy. Knowing that we are joking. Clowning, trusting in each other more now than we ever did back in the day. And whether this is her sick idea of a joke or a glimpse at what could have been, I can say in all honesty, I haven't been this balanced in years. But a glimpse by definition is an impermanent thing. She's leaving soon. And I told her I'd be fine. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, losing someone who's not mine for the second time? Honestly, it concerns me. <laughs> As it does my mother, who probably feel, who feels I probably will never get married because I experienced true love at such an early age and it just wasn't the will of God as he arranged the stars to spell out in Braille, either not her, not now, or not ever. Mm. And I'm tired of thinking of strategies and tactical texting to say how I feel, but not really. <laughs> and the voice in my head is the only thing keeping me balanced. There is an oath to be maintained. There is a vow that needs to be honored. And you can't sacrifice your honor for someone you love. What good could come of it? Acting out in desperation at a point when all seems lost, don't go. There is so much I want to say. And so much I want to do, but for what? My own selfish MO? To make a goodbye that is going to happen that much harder? And yesterday, I saw her crying. So I walked up and I asked what's wrong. She told me that the voice in her head was saying the same thing. Thank you, y'all. This has been a blast. This opportunity.